You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After TV. After TV. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Betas After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's Betas After Show. Hey there, Betas fans. We're here doing the Betas After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. We're talking about episode 108, Show and Tell. I am Matt Lieberman. Uh, Patrick Dees, again, is uh, is out for CES. We miss him. We love him. Uh, follow him on Twitter at P to the, P to the Dees. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun, fun handle he's got there. <laughs> <laughs> you dingus. Okay. Uh, I have special guests. Uh, once again, we have Mr. Josh Stoddard on the show. Hello, everybody. Uh, co-creator, executive producer, and Karin Sony. Yeah. Avinash Dagavi. Hi, show. America. See? Whoa, I learned whoa. fast. You're <laughs> spurning the whole world. The whole you didn't world. learn you didn't jack. Learn anything. <laughs> you didn't learn anything from the last episode. Okay. Um, so, huge episode we got to talk about. Demo Day has finally arrived. We're showing off the new and improved BRB uh, in this uh, epic and very intimate you know, presentation. Like, I loved... The style, it wasn't super slick. It wasn't a rehash of the pilot where you're pitching it to Merch in his, in his right. office. Um, where you finally get to tell the story that, you know, we here at After Buzz, you know, I've known for many weeks now and our listeners know, which is that the app was developed, uh, you know, or the idea for, uh, for it, the germ of it came when you two were roommates, where you and... Uh, Trey were new roommates at Stanford and right. he wanted to help you find friends and make it easier for you to meet people and um, Like everyone all the ancillary characters except for Lisa although her presence is felt this week. Yes uh, yeah. Are at this presentation Jordan's there uh, your father's there. Yeah um, great to see him back uh, and you know, you tell this beautiful story, and we we established the new version of the app, which is just killer. And we talked about that on the last podcast of just like it's just such a brilliant idea to incentivize getting off your screen and out your door. Yeah. Right. Um. Very very cool. Very important. And it's a space that probably will be filled. Hopefully, will be filled at some point in the next five years. Uh, in the social world. Probably in the next five minutes, the way that <laughs> world moves. Yeah. Right. Yeah, probably. Especially with the amount of people on the hill who are watching betas. Yes. Yes. Um, they'd be like, are, are we doing this? Why, <laughs> why have we not done this? This is this, this is good. This is right. good. These Call guys are smart. Those guys in Hollywood land. Those guys right. in Hollywood land is smart. Um, so the majority of this episode takes place uh, at Demo Day. So this was like almost a full week on your Velocity set. Yeah, it was four days actually. The schedule on the show is really weird because we like uh, because we have to shoot in San Francisco. We have mm -hmm. to like bank days here and like not shoot. So it it went over that, but it wasn't a full five days. It was no. it felt like f it was four days, but just because we were back in the stage, we were so happy. You have no idea. <laughs> you walked into the stage and we were all just hugging each other because we were like, air conditioning. Yeah. And, oh, the trailer's right there. <laughs> and like, No dust being kicked no in your dust. face. Oh, yeah. No yeah. bacon ranch quesadillas that yeah. are six hours old. Right, <laughs> exactly. Oh, we appreciated it so much more. Yeah, it was great. It was so great. <laughs> Sweet. Um, so you make this presentation and it's, it's a big hit. But Ish, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, Ish, yeah. yeah. Well, people appreciated what you did, but your company isn't quite in a place where anyone wants to take it on or pay for it. Um, so you're kind of left uh, up S Creek, if you will. Uh, I'm trying to be better about the swearing okay. on this right, show. Right. Um, I'm, I should probably just start a swear jar on this show. Same way I have a pun jar on another show. Or a tangent uh, jar. On a side. tangent mm -hmm. jar? No, because I'd be broke. Right. No. Uh, considering that this is also a tangent. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, cr crap. What are we going to do <laughs> right. uh, when no one wants to buy this product except for 
uh, a woman that we met earlier in the season, uh, Victoria, yep. who uh, used to be the merch's, not assistant, but, you know, helped him manage his portfolio and manage what uh, startups to work with. And they have some kind of mysterious, murky past between them. Uh, can you shed any light on that, Josh? Uh, there's uh, various iterations of that backstory that right. uh, we haven't settled on because we're going to play with it more in season two. Okay, fair so, enough. So, yeah. I mean, we can go over what we what we do know um, is that there was this app. There was an app uh, called Bark uh, mm -hmm. that uh, Victoria felt that the merch was neglecting, so she kind of took it from him and and uh, and ran with it, and then made some success with it, and. Uh, the merch felt spurned. Mm -hmm. You know, she he would claim that she stole it. She would claim that he was neglecting it. You know, who's who's right, who's wrong? We don't know. We don't know why. We do sense that it's much more personal than that. Oh yeah, and, uh, yeah. Well, from the moment the merch sees her, you know it's it's on, <coughs> um, right. because it, it takes a lot to get a rise out of him. Yeah, he's you know he's very zen. Uh, <laughs> at the very least, when dealing with people, you know, like yeah. we've seen him kind of blow up at Lisa, blow up at Trey, but right. it, it wasn't really a personal thing. It was a business thing. Right. Um, and this is definitely personal. Yes, it is personal. Uh, the nature of which we, we're not going to let anybody know yet. Okay, yeah. fair enough. I mean, she is blonde. Secret daughter. Mm -hmm. Secret Ooh, daughter. Secret Don't daughter. think that that wasn't discussed. Okay. Oh. That wasn't discussed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, no. I'm gonna keep my theories to myself. Um, so yeah, Karen likes it. Oh, just because they don't tell us anything, so mm -hmm. I'm like, oh yeah, no, what could it be? Oh, Duh, oh, secret, secret daughter. Secret daughter. She stole. He stole. They're white. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only signifiers. Oh my God, they're both tall and white. They're related. Oh crap. Is yeah, that? Yeah. Is that? Is that how? Is that how you see white people, Karin? Yeah, yeah. This is a height slope. and slope. Height and <laughs> height and height tone. And skin color. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would you say that Josh and I are related? Um, uh, no. Facial hair makes a difference too. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So I would know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to. I have to compliment Josh on his facial hair. Right. I like. Very... I like the the mustache without connectors to the rest of the beard. The patch, which feels a little bit separated. Yeah. From the rest of it, it's very. It's cultivated. You've Thank cultivated you. a look. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, my my mustache would never connect it, even if I let uh, it. Try. That's how mine is. It gets yeah, all never. Of, yeah, that doesn't never. happen. Mine so. used to be. I have a small patch that won't grow, but it grows long enough that you can't tell. Mm. See, that's nice. See, I'll, I'll never have the. The full goatee thing, and it's it's a it's that's a, a bummer, man. Great, it's it's yeah. pretty rocking. As much as I live vicariously through my facial hair, that is something I'll never experience. So, <laughs> cool. So you're not related. Basically. We're not related. <laughs> not related. <laughs> um, I I loved seeing our old our old pal from Sick Jeans back. <laughs> um, Anytime we can get Stewart in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He just does a wonderful job. He's so he's so cluelessly <laughs> off-putting yes mm -hmm. yeah it's it's he gives a weird vibe yeah right? Right. and you can't put your finger on what it is or why but it's just unsettling maybe it's the fact that he uses words like skinnies you look great <laughs> in a pair of our sweet yeah. skinnies oh. yeah mm -hmm. oh that half hug was painful oh that was really painful yeah mm -hmm. you think really... she likes him tall and adam zappley oh, like yeah. well. no. <laughs> oh i loved that oh my god mickey would eat him alive she would yeah. mm-hmm I mean, you know, physique wise, he's he's similar to Dane a little sure. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Kind of Dane esque. Yeah, I'm very excited because you know, as uh, avid followers of this podcast know, I don't watch ahead. I don't watch episodes until I'm about to cover them. Usually until the day of. Um, so I know that we're supposed to get some answers about Mickey's past in episode nine. Yes, yes. Um, so many answers, especially after this episode where she stands up, poor Mitchie, and we'll get to that in a bit. Yeah, uh, uh, I really want to know what's what's cooking under that brain basket. You'll get some info. All right. Yeah. Great. Um, so we were left kind of without hope, but we got we got Mr. Michael Lau sniffing around. Right, um, in his blue jeans, mm -hmm. blue pants. His sick right, blue, blue pants. pants. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. And uh, he and Trey have a bit of a tete-a-tete -tete, um, yeah. where Trey can smell the blood in the water, you know, that he's sniffing. Yeah. And right. Michael Michael just wants to help you find your voice. That's all. Right. He just wants you to help you find your voice uh, and maybe some other things, potentially. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what do you think, like... 
I mean, you've shot the whole season, so I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> no, but like... What is going to happen even... I don't know. I, we well, find out about Mickey next episode? Yeah, what? I know. But uh, <laughs> everyone else is intimating for the first time on the show, because you, you and Evan have been saying it since the start of the season that we may be seeing, you know, that uh, Nash may be gay, and that does he know or does he not know? So I, I'm putting it to you. Does he? Is he aware of it? Um, I think it's one of those things where um, deep down he is aware of it, but he's not ready to deal with it at all. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, Michael Lau is like the perfect person to get it out of him because he um, is kind of the two things that Nash is. So he's gay, but he's also real. He loves technology. He loves this world. He lives in this world. And he actually communicating and being with him helps his career so it's an excuse for him to spend time with him and do all of that and i think that edges him out of his shell more than anything else when so. when were you made aware that that was a part of the character well what's really interesting is that in the we talked in the last podcast about the audition but um normally they give you like a big description yeah. for a pilot of the character and it was in there originally and michael lau was in the original pilot oh really yeah mm -hmm. which in the original script um and then it just, uh, when we got to the table read for the pilot, it was cut out, I, I guess, because I don't know why you can ask him. <laughs> but um, that was there originally um, in the thing. But then once the show got picked up, I was like, well, it wasn't the pilot. So I was like, I don't know if they got rid of it or what mm -hmm. happened. But then, yeah, it did. It came back. Yeah. But I, I knew that that was there but then i wasn't sure if it was going to come back but okay well I'm, I'm glad that it did and that we're we're getting this kind of complexity and i love the scene between you and hobbs yeah where it's you're great. De you're decompressing <laughs> yeah. you're decompressing you got your headphones on in a little abandoned uh room just to get away from all the noise and the lights and the people right and he comes in he's like hey man totally cool you're just you're walking your own path it might not be as straight a path as <laughs> my path or someone else's path may have some curves some bends it might right. be a colorful path but yeah. it's yours and <laughs> right. uh, keep on trucking yeah it's great because like we don't really communicate nash and hobbs don't yeah really you don't have a lot of scenes together no. yeah and it's kind of great that one of the scenes that we have together is such a great thing that he's doing which is like trying to reach out to him because you would think someone like Mitchell or someone who's he's more comfortable with would but like I love that it's Hobbs because it yeah. just makes the whole thing awkward but great and mm -hmm. like it just shows that these characters care for each other because um, you don't really see like Hobbs and Nash like ever like more than anything I'm screaming at him or like yeah. telling him he's stupid so well I mean it I humanizes Hobbs yeah but it's still Hobbs being Hobbs mm -hmm. but it's you know and then I think it, it was an, it was a good moment for you guys well I think yeah. it's also and correct me if I'm wrong it's the first time that anyone has flat out not asked yes. are you gay yeah. but is like is like hey man you you might be gay and I like that about you yes right yeah so I mean later we see you outside of this bar in the Castro yeah. and uh, is I don't know if that was the same bar you were at you well no you were at Bar Dukin with your right, father right so obviously it kind of set off some wheels turning yeah definitely yeah. and I think Hobbs was like a, a big part of that mm -hmm. um, and I think that goes back to Nash's relationship with Trey where like it is a weird relationship because Trey never really ha asks him about his personal life or yeah, like, no. encourages him or anything because he's he he's kind of just using me for my business and or whatever so I think it's it, because Trey has never paid attention to it and that's his best friend he's never really had anyone to talk to about it and I feel like when it comes from Hobbs Nash kind of has to address it because he's like even this guy is mm -hmm. like you know what I mean even this guy is like I don't know just he knows and like it's it's fine whatever so mm -hmm. he I think that really pushes him and then later on the conversation he has with his dad is like uh I think where where for the first time you know they're they're more comfortable than you've ever seen them before, mm -hmm. and I think he's he's put so much pressure on himself that I think that starts easing a little bit. Um, because I feel like Nash to a certain point might have even thought that Hobbs might make fun of him, like if he knew hmm. that about him or something. So I feel like that scene where it's like you know he's being so nice to him almost is like the most encouraging thing for him to like yeah. want to hit up the Castro. Yeah, but what, you made a great point about the relationship with <laughs> Trey where, you know, Trey is like, I'm helping you get right. a social life. Right. And he's so determined to get you the social life that he's not giving you room to find it yourself. Right. I think he's kind of assumes on some level you have no interest. Right. And it's not that you have no interest, you just didn't necessarily know where to start. Right. Well, I think it's kind of emblematic of Trey's biggest problems anyways right. this idea that he's you know he's going to go at this saying i've got nash's best interest in mind yeah charge ahead charge ahead without asking nash what his best interests right. are right. and um i think that's you know he's just he's tone deaf in that way he has good intentions yeah. he just doesn't know how to really 
seal the deal. Right. Yeah. He is a he's a big ego. He doesn't really check in with other people. Right. No. Yeah, he's convinced himself that he's doing right and doing just and doing well. Mm-hmm. And uh and that's, you know, and he, you know, this is my best friend, so I'm of course I'm gonna do anything I can for him. Right. Anything I can except for listen to him and <laughs> right. you know and pay attention and to, to his needs like a, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. you know, ask him, Am I doing okay? Right. And, yeah. Um, I love the scene with your father. It was such a different, yeah. uh, different tonality. Both both scenes, you know, than where we were in episode three, yeah. where he finally is like, you know, I see your value as a businessman. Like, right. huge, huge, huge yeah. vote of approval. Yeah, he's playing arcade games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's huge. That's like impossible. He's making jokes. <laughs> I know. I'm like, when when do I get to have this conversation with my right. dad? When does he buy me a whiskey? Right. Shoot. Right. But I feel like it's also a really sad scene because yeah. you know that eventually he's going to have to yeah. tell his dad and that's not probably, I mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, his dad scene. says, you know, yeah. I can't wait for you to experience what I, ex- the pride, you know, a father right. feels Which when his son, you know, and basically you have to tell your dad that I'm not going to have a son. Yeah. You know? And so well, he might have a son. He might, but not in the sense that. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's that much harder, you know, to knowing that you've got something that you've always wanted, and you're going to have to give it away potentially right. to get the freedom that you want. Right. Yeah. 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 I Nash has a lot of pressure on him. Yeah, I know. It's a lot. Just when it starts easing up a little bit, <laughs> they yeah. put a lot more. But at least Dad and Michael Lau are getting along. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They're dinner laughing. with dinner with the in laws could making, be. Uh, yeah, could be a big. They're hit. making pants jokes. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's great. Oh yeah, no, there's it's commi- long pants are a commitment, man. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm. Subtext right there. I thought that. Oh, ooh, yeah. No, I thought that was very very funny. Um, okay, I just want to talk really quickly about iTunes before I forget. Yes. Uh, folks, thank you for downloading this podcast. We put it out every single week, two episodes a week. We've been playing catch up all season. We will be caught up before the end of the season. Uh, we love recapping the show and uh, we love doing it for free. We do uh, about 60 shows a week here at After Buzz TV. It's a crazy amount of content. It's all free. If you lined it all up end to end, you could be listening or watching free content basically for a full year nonstop. Now, it would be about TV shows that you weren't watching because you were busy watching or listening to these shows, but it's still a big deal and it's all free. Some of you who may be more generous or more, you know, caring minded may be like, well, hey, I'm getting all this free stuff. What can I do for you guys? I'm mm. a good, happy, fulfilled person. Um, well, here's what you can do. We don't want any of your money. We don't need a ton of your time. All we need you to do, go to iTunes, slap the show with a five-star rating, you know, give us a review, let us know how we're doing, let us know we're doing a good job, that you like the show, that you want it to come back. It means the world to us, and it keeps the show highly searchable so more people can find it. Tell your friends about the podcast, tell your friends about betas. We want the audience to grow. It is a huge ambition for all of us here at AfterBuzz TV. We love this show. We are championing this show. Uh, And we need the fans to do the very, very same. You know, we have these little gems of shows that, you know, don't come around very often. And we need to make sure that they continue. Best way to do it, get your friends watching this show. Here's a great way. Go to Amazon.com slash free month and you can get a month of Amazon Prime for free. Huge, huge library of streaming content and you get free two-day shipping on anything on the site. It's pretty incredible. Uh, and if you want to keep it, hey man, it's only like 75 bucks a year, which is crazy. You break that down, that's less than $6 a month. Yep. That's insane. Cheaper than Netflix, cheaper than Hulu Plus, and you get free shipping. Come on, do I have to say it twice? I don't think I do. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, so cool. Thank you. Yeah. How'd you like that? <laughs> that was not, that was evangelical. That might be the best one I've yeah, ever done. No, that was really good. <laughs> that was really good. Cool. Jeff um, Bezos is proud. Yes. Jeff Bezos is proud. Do <laughs> I get my own Amazon free drone? Yeah. <laughs> I want a drone. <laughs> Yeah, I want him to do. send me a thank you note via, via drone. drone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's go. on his personal stationery. Yeah. yeah, there we go. That would be great. Okay, so uh, Mitchie finally gets up the nuts yeah. to ask Mickey out, kind of, sort of. Yeah. Um, and she can sense it coming from a mile away, and she's very uncomfortable. Yes. But she can't quite shut him down. You can't tell that kid no, not to his face. I know, 
But I, I wish that she would have, because what the alternative was that much worse. <laughs> Agreed. So uh, sad. I find it pretty amazing that Park Chan Wook and the uh, entire cast of the Korean movie <laughs> Old Boy was in San Francisco for a screening at a small theater. Well, yeah. That's an amazing opportunity. That was a huge. How could you miss how that? Could yeah, you? that was a huge scene that uh, got cut out. Oh man! <laughs> you had the Wook himself. Yeah, we, we had a whole we had a whole tribute to you know the 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 hammer scene. Sure. Yeah, we did it all. It was oh, good. Okay. I wish. I uh, I just had so many puns of just him hammering Mickey. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yes. What was what was that? No, that mean? was just like wow, good. Okay, that good. Was, yeah. All right. I'm glad that I I got a strange <laughs> yeah, sound out a, of you. Yeah. Yeah. You had to expel a bunch of air because uh -huh. it was yeah. that alarming. <laughs> yeah. The imagery of what I just brought up. Um. So, poor Mitchie. She completely lets him down. He was so excited. Uh, I love the scene where he's trying to pick out his his outfit, yeah. and uh, Trevor's mom and Hobbs are giving him competing advice. And as soon as Trevor's mom pipes up, I'm like, "Oh my God, Hobbs needs to bang Trevor's mom. Hobbs is gonna bang Trevor's mom, and it's gonna be great. It's gonna be the best thing we've ever seen. And Hobbs is totally gonna bang Trevor's mom. And then, wouldn't you know it? By the end of the scene, she throws him a nice wink. I'm yeah. like, yeah, "Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. brain. Write the show." Yeah. <laughs> Um, you see how the pieces are moving. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can see the pieces. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I do get to talk to you every week. It's yeah. a lot easier <laughs> when, you know, you, you meet the pl chess players. Yeah. That was that was me expelling okay. air because yeah. okay. I was so amazed at your ability to uh, make my dreams come true and have Hobbs totally bang Trevor's mom. Yeah. Well. Because. But where will they? Where will they? Oh, that's, uh, that's uh, you will whoa. not be able to guess that. <laughs> oh man, I will not be able to guess that because I hadn't really thought about it. I was um, like, um, the couch, her room, perhaps. I'll say so, so much. We had to build. The area where it happened because they destroy it. It was, well, just a, separate a, it was a swing set. set. It was a swing, okay. swing, swing set. Yeah. Okay, set. Yeah. I'm very uh, excited now to see how that happens. Because here's the thing, and I know it's not going to go down this road. Maybe it will. <laughs> if Trevor was Hobbs's stepson, oh, no. that's such a bizarre, messed up reality. To me, that's that is a huge generator of fun. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of discussion about that dynamic. Yeah. That, uh, yes! Uh, oh, no. Damn it, brain! You yeah. did it again! <laughs> love my brain. Yeah. Um, I love, uh, I just, I love Mitchie's, uh, you know, emo chic. And he's like, no, man, you know, you just, you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta negger. Uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta tell her, you can't compliment her, you can't do anything nice for her. You gotta jerk off three times. Jerk off three times, not once, not twice, but three, three times. times. So you absolutely do not have it on the brain. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and conceivably you could go all night, but that could backfire. It could. Yeah. It could. Oh yeah. You might not, you might not have the stamina left. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, Mitch I mean, is, I Mitch guess he's a young guy. He's young. He has yeah. it. He's got he has it. it to spare. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially after seeing old boy. He has it. Oh yeah. yeah right? Gets your fire up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> 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 there are many movie. sexier movies than old boy. Than yeah. old boy <laughs> with him. Uh, I don't give away the twist of old boy. Although like it's 2013 people. You yeah. should have seen it by now. Um, Jesus, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Nothing's wrong with you. I love you. Don't, 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 don't run away. Don't run away from me. The AfterBuzz TV family is all I have. Oh. It's not true. Keep it's not true. Keep My life isn't. I sat today eating my crumpet. <laughs> it's already over. You just said crumpet. I just said done. crumpet. <laughs> my done. improv skills are rusty. I know, Marissa, I'm off topic, okay? <laughs> I'm getting back to the show. What is it about your show, Josh? It inspires me. I don't me. know, but you just sounded like Kermit the Frog, and it was kind of awesome. You had that <laughs> Great. little break in your voice. It was mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, it's the Kermit break. Yeah. It's like the Uncanny Valley, the, <laughs> where on one end is Kermit the Frog, the other end is a human voice. Somewhere in between, uh -huh. I just don't buy that voice. It makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, so what's going through Mickey's head? Why, why couldn't she just like even just make up an excuse? You'll I mean, will I just out. will we just know the moment you well, watch? I, mean, episode I think you'll nine. understand. I mean, I think I think there's part of Mickey who views Mitchell as a good, a really, really good guy that doesn't deserve a girl like her. Oh, really? okay, that's a way to frame it. Yeah. Well, I mean, we don't know much about her past. It seems a bit shady. She's not above stealing, um, bending the law. 
she's had a checkered past. I'm sure that her self-esteem isn't quite in a place where yeah. she feels she des is deserving of love, you know, and that's very much what Mitchell brings to the table um, is this, you know, in puppy, spades, puppy yeah. dog love all the time. Yeah. You know, follows you around. He's a sweetheart. He is. We just yeah. want the best for him. He's a big yeah. old hanging sweetheart. Yes. Yeah. You know, who's in like the top 100 on Tiny Wings in the in the rankings. Yeah. Yeah. I still have to play Tiny Wings. I still have to too. Yeah. yeah. Never. You just threw it in a script, just <laughs> nonchalant. I mean, I've I've seen it. I know it, but I no. I, have I don't. Yeah, it. I haven't even seen it. I just assume that there's a tiny little plane. Yeah. Uh, the rest is all is all up to them to bring the rest of it. <laughs> to bring. <laughs> To bring the rest of it to the table. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, on the other side of the table, we got uh, we got Trey Barrett trying to figure out how how do I make this happen. Victoria is the only offer yep. on the table. Merch is one hundred percent against it, and he's you know he's kind of mitigating uh, your father's fears and right. your concerns, and he's <laughs> like you know you have to just trust that we'll get the next seed round and it'll happen. You just need patience. Patience is not Trey Barrett's strong suit. Nope. It's uh, it's not even his second strongest or his third strongest suit. It might not even be in his closet. Yeah. Um, he, he wants to make this happen. So, of course, we get this great fake out where it's like, uh, we need to have a meeting. And I'm like, oh, man, he's going to Victoria. But no, it's Michael Lau. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, oh, man, so this is going to happen. And then, of course, Michael shuts it down. Yeah. He's like, you know, sit where sit where I'm sitting in my shoes. Would you pick up or invest in uh, a business, no matter how promising, with limited users and no money? Yeah. No, yeah, no. you wouldn't. You wouldn't. And I have... You know what? What uh, attachment I have to you guys really is only to Avinash, yeah. Um, who I and I assume he's still gonna try to poach you. Uh, yeah. You know, so you get this little user base bump, but it's not much. Yeah. Meanwhile, Jordan Alexis rears her head once again. Yes. <laughs> um, and the whole time I'm just <laughs> like, Ooh, what's gonna happen? Yeah. Um, and she's being blackmailed. Yeah. Yep. Um, by her uh, sexual assaultee. Yes. Right. Um, Antoine. Mr. Antoine Ho. Who has way more balls and brains right. than we ever attributed yeah. to him yeah. at that desk. It's always the quiet ones yep. mm -hmm. that want your job. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, we don't. He, we don't even know if he can write. No, we have no idea. <laughs> yeah, and he wants yeah. her job. She's not gonna let it happen. <coughs> and uh, I love the line where, um, hey, you know, here's a dirty martini. The olive juice is the only thing I could think of as close to an olive branch that's yeah. here. So he's like, he's making an effort. Right. Well, I think he's trying very hard in this episode to live the lessons that he learned in the woods, which yeah. you know, to surrender control. To listen to your team, to listen to people, and people are telling, you know, the merch is telling him, your mentor is telling you, don't color outside this line. Don't go to Victoria. Mm -hmm. right. You know, uh, you know, the last time we saw Jordan and Trey together was at the She Plus Plus Mixer, and it right. didn't go well. Right, where she's trying to make up his neck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's trying really to make amends. He's also Nash. trying to probably, you know, get some intel from her at the same time. Right. But, yeah. You know, but I think Trey's trying very hard against every one of his instincts to to play nice. He doesn't see her romantically, though. Does no. he? No. I mean, she does. Well, she, she certainly yeah. does. Yeah. 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 I, I feel like he's playing it very professionally. Um, I think. I think that. I mean, there's. There, I think Trey's a little tone deaf when it comes to women. I mean, we, we right. confronted that directly in that episode. But, um, but yeah, I think. I think he's. He just doesn't think when he's focused on something else. He's not thinking in any other sphere. He's not thinking about seduction. He's not thinking about yeah any of that stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it was just, it was nice to see, not nice, but like very cool to see the tables get turned on her because she, you know, yeah. right. is very much an in control kind of a person. In control, out of control. Yeah. Right. Just a controlled chaos. Yeah. Barely right. controlled chaos. Always kind of like trying to maintain dominance over the people around her. She's very much not in that situation now. Yeah. Um, and it's cool to see their, their bond kind of starting to grow, even though. He's still very much coming at it from a professional point of view. You need those, you know, counterparts in your professional life who you can turn to for advice or intel. We're we're close enough, but that's that's you know just what it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, 
But what? then Eborg Nine, you're forgetting the big. Oh my thing. God! How yes, the reveal of Eborg. Because oh, I am. There's so much happening. I know. There's so, there's much, so much happening in this episode. I was but waiting for you. I know, but I I loved <laughs> Eborg Nine because, like, you know, we've been teasing. What yeah. are these guys right. up to all season? I even said to you guys, I'm like, oh man, it's either gonna be like mind blowing what they're doing, <laughs> and it's gonna change the game, or it's just gonna be a big fat turkey. Yeah. And uh, it's oh mind blow. No, it's not. No. It's a big fat <laughs> turkey yeah it's a big fat turkey <laughs> well i mean that actually came from a, a a story we were told very early on when we were doing research we went and uh, sat in at an incubator and we asked the guy who was the merch of the incubator basically what what's the craziest story what's the craziest pitch you ever got mm -hmm. and this guy came in and he, he there was this guy who had recently sold his last company for 50 million dollars um teamed up with a uh uh a guy who was a, a PhD in uh, robotics at MIT, and their pitch was literally a robot DJ. They were like the EDMC. You can pay you can pay a, so much money for these DJs, and they don't mm -hmm. do anything. And <laughs> right. yeah, <coughs> here's a robot that can do it all and do it everywhere. And, and, and to their credit, of the price very slickly designed robot, yeah. shiny. It's red. <laughs> right. It's yeah. shiny. It's red. Yeah. yeah. I love his arms, the you know, the segmentation of the plating, it's just beautiful. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, but not really gonna cut it. Um and uh <laughs> Dang it. Sick Jeans, unfortunately, CEO sick. Yeah. Ironically. <laughs> the irony is r velvety rich. Yeah. Um, yes. Um and his PowerPoint isn't working. And like, you know, merch at the top of the at the top of the presentations. He says, you know, this may be the strongest class we've ever had. Or no, it's 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 uh, David Chu who says that. Um, who every time that he shows up, I'm just like, oh, oh douche. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, uh, poor Josh is, is having a little, little coughing issue right now. I but um, I just love that Merch says, you know, this is like the best class we've ever had. And it's largely a bunch not, of turkeys. Yeah. It's not great. I feel like he's also, it's a party, so he's covering. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, Jordan Alexis is there. He's not going to let his Victoria's there. He's not letting his guard down. Yeah. He's he's putting on a show. He's showing yeah. and telling. <laughs> All right. Now that Josh isn't here, let's talk about him. All what right. What do you think of Josh? Well, honestly, Evan is way better. No, this oh. is just... <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to listen to it. It's okay. He's literally around the corner. Dirt. I know. <laughs> um, so we, what else, what else in this episode? I guess we're just kind of left with this whole what now aspect right. where we're not going with Victoria. We're staying the course, but I feel like after demo day, the, the accelerator is over, right? right? Like that was the whole point. Yeah, exactly. Was you get to there. So now what? We're just, we're running this app, but open-ended question mark like what's what's going through nash's head right i think it's like oh, the whole thing is like a huge disappointment because it was building up to this like it's like they failed the test like yeah that was the exam and they've like failed it and it also it's more heartbreaking because their presentation wasn't bad it was better than all the, the anyone other. else's yeah, yeah and especially when you have other people who aren't that good you would think that the one thing that shows up well uh would do well so i think it's even more heartbreaking for them because they actually did a good job and now they're not going forward but it really fuels the other the remaining three episodes because the stakes are higher than ever because this was supposed to be what would have been maybe a finale or something mm -hmm. the demo day that's been like building up but now the next three episodes we're desperate we'll take anything that comes our way and so like Trey's finally reached out to Michael and all these things are set in motion so I think it sets the stakes perfectly for what's going to happen in the next three episodes and it makes us all very vulnerable in terms of like the app and and not being confident at all about like where we are with the whole thing awesome yeah and can I see a lot of stuff with that can I ask you like what's your your dream scenario uh, five seasons in yeah what's what's happening I want to see Nash be the merch. <laughs> that would be like rad. That kind of character, mm -hmm. but not the way the merch is. Like he's running it his own way, and there's all these like very 
socially awkward kids that he's like listen mm-hmm. this be yourself yeah <laughs> do what you don't want don't let the trays of the world push <laughs> right, you around right. man yeah. find your voice yeah exactly yeah i want to see him do that i want to see him split away from trey like permanently and mm-hmm. i want to see them butt heads and be rivals oh that would be great wouldn't it like mm-hmm. he does like nash goes to a different company and he is and trey is like oh man maybe even michael Laos. <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. maybe even that's, yeah, the, that style, com- the fashion company. Oh God, Nash, oh God, Nash, Nash would there, be terrible. They'd <laughs> that be would selling be awful. Nothing but shorts and <laughs> right. vintage sweaters. Right, exactly. Oh, yeah, um, but I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like he should. I want to see him like run his own thing, like mm-hmm. be one of those people. That'd be fun. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I want to see Hobbs get married. <laughs> I want to see Hobbs get married, <laughs> but like deal with like that kind of life mm-hmm. with like having a pregnant wife or something that'd be really fun yeah yeah that, he that can't one. support a family yeah, he no. can't raise a child he no. burned his cat right he burned his only friend yeah i want to see him raise kids that would yeah. be really funny yeah i want to see mitchy get out of his shell that's true yeah i want to see him get out of his shell if it's not mickey i hope it's someone who really appreciates him well yeah, there's well, stuff happening in the future uh, okay okay we set seats for that okay yeah all right all right Okay. And I just want to see Ma- Mickey and Trey together. <laughs> yeah. Mickey and Trey. Yeah, well, it's a bold it's move. Season five, we're running on okay. a story. Here. I guess you're right. We're At that point, we have to try every combination. He's confident. Yeah. She wants that. Oh, yeah. You no. Know? Let's see uh, Let's see yeah. Nash and Mitchie together. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's a. Uh, he's got love to give. Yeah. He's I've got missed love a lot, to give. apparently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're, uh, we're we're writing season five, five. of your show. Season oh, fantastic. Right yeah. Now. Nash right. has become the merch of his own uh, accelerator, uh-huh. That's right. uh, but he runs it completely differently, yeah. uh, and he's competing with Trey, and uh, Trey is dating Mickey. dating Mickey, and uh, Hobbs is married with children. Right. What's E. Borgnine doing? E. Borgnine uh, <laughs> is actually running the... The, the country <laughs> yeah yeah we Pre- elected president eborg nine president president oh uh, no president nine yeah, uh president nine, president nine. Yeah, president right. nine uh, we have uh we have china on the phone right <laughs> and it just spins a fat beat and uh china signs a peace treaty D- yeah diplomacy at, the, at its finest yeah, yeah. okay um, um we were talking about like uh how demo day is like this big thing that we've been working towards but now that that's a bust where do we where do the characters go from here right because that was what was it was the whole point was working towards this mm-hmm. big thing you well know. i think if you know if you if, if you know trey at all he's not gonna he's not gonna stop there so. no and i feel he's like i know him very well yes right <laughs> yeah. just from watching these uh these eight episodes i yeah. feel i've made some friends yeah right <laughs> some lasting relationships mm-hmm. uh that mean a lot david chu in particular yes oh no <laughs> david chu i have modeled my whole lifestyle around <laughs> david chu he's amazing yeah no, uh, anytime that so- someone is upset by something I do, I, hey man, sounds like a you problem, mm-hmm. not a, a chew, chew problem. problem. <laughs> and they'll be like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, hey Doesn't man, work. you could go to amazon.com slash free month oh, and you could find oh out. Oh my yeah. God. Boom. Boom. Nonstop sales. Yeah. Okay. I like it. Uh, I think it's time we wrap this thing up. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for coming on. Indeed. Uh, yeah. Karn, it's a pleasure to thank meet you. you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Josh, thank you for your continued support. Absolutely. Thank you for your continued support. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no, it's know. good. It's, it's great. Okay. Thank you. You like it a lot. All right. Uh, Josh, where can the people find you? At JP Stodd, J P S T O D D. And Karn, where can the people find um, you? At it's Karn Sony. Okay. And you can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman. That's M-A-T-T-L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. You can also find me here on AfterBuzz TV on a bunch of shows. I might not list them all. I'm going to try. Uh, Sleepy Hollow, Almost Human, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Doctor Who, Sherlock, Lost Girl, Helix, Banshee, True Detective, Justified. Uh, I got Orphan Black coming in the spring. A bunch, a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, Keep your eyes peeled. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next week for episodes 9 and 10. Thank you so much. Good night. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Bar Dukin!
The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its Thank owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.